Is the red pill dying? Guys, we have so much to talk about today. Chris Williamson is interviewing Destiny on his podcast discussing is the red pill actually dying? Do you know what the red pill is? We're talking about this today on the Wilson Brothers podcast. I'm Isaac. This is David. We have our guest JP on the podcast today. We are super excited. Make sure to like and subscribe for any future videos coming up on any surrounding topics. We're excited to react today. You guys excited? I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, I like I like this guy a lot. I just got introduced to him like maybe like two months ago. He's jacked out of his mind. Dude, he's so funny. He doesn't look he, like he looks like he's in good shape sitting down. Then he stands up and I'm like, that guy's massive. Well, he's really <laughs> he's like he's really like the, a large individual. The key to him is discipline, right? Yeah. He really cares about his routine. So yeah. any good man that's worth his salt has a good discipline and routine in the morning. The moment he wakes up to the moment he goes to sleep is routine. It doesn't have to be every hour, but he cares about his physical health. I'd and love, I really I'd appreciate love, that. About I'd him. love to hear about your routine. My routine will no, come. I, no, 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 no. <laughs> if you, you want right. to know about Ryan's routine, <laughs> no, right until we, the end we of the video. Some no. You want to buy sure. my album about how I get ready in the morning. <laughs> Do you see the crap I have to deal with, ladies and gentlemen? Crap a, is what? It's manure for the good, kind, and hearted. Stop. <laughs> All right, let's get started on this. <laughs> Do you think the Red Bull's dying? Ooh. That's something that both of us have spent a little bit of time orbiting in one form or another, either you debating it or me getting abused by it. Mm -hmm. What do you think's happening with the red pill at the moment? Yeah, I think most stuff has like a probably like a two to four year shelf life for internet content. What happened and to his it hair? Kinda came and it kind of went. Andrew Tate and the uh, the pre trial or pre indictment imprisonment probably hurt a bit because it took away a lot of the publicity. I think that the the nature of like the conversations for the red pill stuff I think was really bad. Um, I think the like the content strategy from a lot of the red pillars, I think was very subpar. Um, How so? Uh, like, for me, the way that I've stayed fresh and relevant for 15 years of content creation is because I'm always finding like new stuff to talk about or a new angle to kind of like hit something from or like I'm kind of moving on with contemporary events. I feel like for Red Pill stuff, I feel like I could have written the script for those shows after being on two of them um, to where it's like, okay, guys, today we're going to talk about does body count matter? Do guys value you for the amount of money that you make? Do women fuck over men in divorce? <laughs> are men lonely because they're simps it was like the same topics yeah. for like over a year such that it became like a meme where when I would show up on a show some of my fans would do like bingo cards of like okay well when is the body count question coming up hypergamy or, yeah hyper are women hypergamous or not and then it's like and then and then it and it's funny because like the questioning would always there's a fallacy called all roads lead to Rome I think if there's not there should be one where basically literally no matter how somebody answers a there question no. it always I goes mean, back to what yeah. you want it to so I'll, I might say I mean he raises oh, he raises a lot of good points I mean he talks about the red pill space they keep harping on the same thing for like the audience and like even myself like can you give like a just a very broad definition of what is the red what is the red pill the red space? pill is it comes from the whole matrix term of taking the blue or the red. Yeah, you, take, yeah. you take the red, now your world has been opened and you see actually what's behind everything. Yeah. So the red pill essentially be, believes become the best man you can so that you then can sleep around, you can have control over women because they do believe that women are meant to just purely be at home and men are the alpha species essentially. So men dominate yeah. women. Yeah, they, they believe men. They, dominate in a sense. They believe yes. men can sleep around and women should remain virgins, which is kind of weird to think about. But here's the thing, it's but, the reward yeah. of financial, yeah. spiritual discipline is sexual promiscuity. Yeah. That is the reward of the other disciplines. Yeah, so what they talk about mostly is, it's kind of like what Goggins talks about is an aspect of the red pill. Okay. Because they're, the core of the red pill is to empower men to not be weak anymore and yeah. to be strong. That's the foundation, and that's the part of Andrew Tate I 100% agree with is become the strongest man you can yep. so that you make your woman feel safe and just become masculine. So, so what I'm what I'm hearing essentially is, is a very superficial idea of I am this great figure from a worldly perspective, but spiritually I'm poor. And it lacks and morality. And that's yeah. the problem. I it have. lacks it, depth. Yeah. So lacks internally morality. I'm broken. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, that's what so you compensate with the alpha mentality of I work out really. It's funny. I was at the gym the other day. There was a group of these guys and like they were just talking. It's so funny. Like I'm older now, 32, but like I, I hear these younger guys talking and like they're talking about like effing this girl and hitting it from behind. And like they were like having like very grotesque conversation yeah. in the gym. Yeah. And like I could tell like some other people were uncomfortable and I'm listening to it. And I was like, man, these guys are such idiots. What do you think your antidote to that is? Well, I mean, when we were talking previously, like talking about like 
one, they're super insecure. Yeah. Like that's just a simple reality, right? Like two, they get in these packs because it's not, they're not capable of spending time alone and really yeah. figuring out who they are. Yeah. So they need other people to validate their behavior and who they are as people. Mm. So like you look at a lot of these red pill society stuff that like these videos come out, like they're cults, they're groups. Like you have to group together because individually you're nothing. They're silos of, of what you believe and anything that you don't believe, you push out. It's like any other belief where if you tell me, hey man, this is what we're gonna do because this is what men do. This is yeah. what alphas do. This is what the bros are about. And I disagree with you. Well, now I'm not a part of that. Yeah, he's, he's not about what we're about. But it's yeah. like the reality is, if you don't have a basis and a foundation for what you truly believe and understand that at, at a deep core level, if I can't put my head down at night and say, hey, I did the best I could today because of these factors and I know how I treat people and I know where I'm going when I die, I, I, listen, Andrew Tate, all these guys, I'm sure they have a, a strong belief of what they are, but it, I know they're poor because I've been in that same situation where you act really great and, and wonderful in front of people, but behind closed doors, you're just, you're broken. Yeah, I mean, I like a lot of things that the red pill space does, uh, believes in when it yeah. comes to discipline because it's helped me just like David Goggins. Like what David Goggins preaches <laughs> is part of what the red, spill, red pill space believes, but yeah. the red pill space takes it too far. Yeah. Meaning, for example, they don't believe that men should get married because then the women can take advantage of them and leave them. They believe that if you're in a relationship, as long as you're providing for that woman, you can go out and cheat on her. But the woman should be okay with that because you're taking care of her financially. Therefore, that's her one need. And the, she just wants to feel secure. They don't understand the value of an actual marriage and having kids that you personally raise. Like even Andrew Tate said he wants to have 25 kids with multiple women and it, he even said that he said he said why would one why would i put my generational legacy on the line to make a one woman happy we can we can talk about this in perpetuity but i would love to hear i will say though very quickly it's funny because you say you believe in certain aspects of what they say but other areas they take it too far what it sounds like is the same as society how is they take the good from the bible that's easy and applicable and then they throw away the stuff that's too hard and difficult to deal with and that's what culture from a church perspective has become it's like okay i'm going to take the good stuff here the the faith and the you know let's have mercy and love others but the stuff that's really hard and i don't yeah. like i'm going to dismiss the well that's just the same thing that's why the i suffering, that's yeah. why i don't proclaim to be red pill is because really i'm more of like that from the david goggins camp of just go and push through pain become the best version of yourself but david so goggins is he a lives, red pill. no he no, lives, no i'm saying he even that says it he even says it too like He'll never talk on another man because he doesn't know what that man's gone through, yeah. what he's experienced, what he's That's about. Andrew real. Tate will sit there yeah. and diminish a man. He calls in front out of more people. men to the camera. He'll call you out in the camera, but when he's actually there with you, he'll speak. He'll like challenge. Just be like, dude, you can be better. You can. In a good. But I way. think about it from that perspective of like, if you see an individual that's all about putting people down or being better than everyone else, they're not there. He says that's not an alpha. Yeah. And Alpha lives it. And you see it. Like yeah. he doesn't talk about the stuff he does. He just does it. And you hear about it from other people. Most of Goggin's stories started coming out because people were telling them. Yeah. The dude was like doing Jesse firefighting. It's, Jesse Itzler, random... did you see? Have you read his book or listened about his book no. where he lives with Go Goggins, lives oh, with him for yeah, 60, 30 days? Like, yeah. Bro, and like he's telling stories about how they go to this race and it's a four leg race. There's four people that huh. run and whoever runs the most miles wins the race. He was by himself. It was just him against people that had four people on a team. And he's like, who is this guy? <laughs> and he's like, that was my this first introduction insane. to David Goggins. Yeah. So like, yeah. that's my thing is like these people, it. they just, I don't All know. right, speaking of alpha, let's see if Destiny is an I, alpha. I, I don't like Destiny. Let's we'll see if he's an alpha. Girl, have you ever dated a guy? You say you don't care if guys are alpha. Have you ever dated a guy that's 5'5"? Five five, and the girl might be like, no, I haven't. <laughs> because you hate short guys, you know, you won't. And she's like, well, no. Okay, have you ever dated a guy that's 5'5"? Five five? Yes, I have. Oh, when? Uh, when I was in uh, high school, I actually did. I got his 5'5". Five five. Really? Are you together anymore with him? Well, no. Oh, you dumped him because he was a short king, right? Like, yeah. Or it's like, are you dating a guy that's 5'5"? Five five? He's like, yeah, I am now. And it's like, oh, really? Is he rich? Uh, no, he's not that rich. Does he have a huge dick? Yeah, his dick is pretty big. Oh, hypergamous. You just want the pool boy. You're probably going to you know, find a rich guy. Like, there's always a... Andrew Tate, actually, is the perfect uh, example. <laughs> of the all there we go. Rome, okay? When Andrew Tate had the pretrial imprisonment, there were never going to be charges because it was all a scam. It was just a sham uh, kangaroo court. Now that there are charges, if if there wouldn't have been charges and he would have been released with no charges, no indictment, it was because obviously it was a scam, right? But now that there are charges, 
Well, obviously, because it's a scam. Of course, they're going to make up charges. So now they're going to go to court. And if they go to court and they get, uh, if they go to court and they beat the charges, it's because it was bullshit the whole time. But if they go to, uh, go to court and they're convicted, well, it's because it's bullshit the whole time. They're going to make it up always. So literally, no matter what happens, it's always because of your particular prediction of the world. So yes. you end up with these prediction models that will predict every single event, which means they don't actually predict anything, but it allows you to escape the cognitive dissonance of your predictive model mm -hmm. not being correct. Mm -hmm. So you don't have to worry if you've got a good view, uh, uh, like a good blueprint of the world, because literally, no matter what happens, you've always got a way to make sense of it in the future. Well, this is why that four-step process of when was the last time someone publicly admitted that they were wrong? When was uh -huh. the last time they surprised you? If someone came out and had a discussion about this and was like, do you know what, they, you know what it is? I actually think that a lot of the time I do actually see girls in relationships with guys that hypergamously I wouldn't predict that they were in a relationship with. That uh -huh. guy just seems to have game. It's not really about the fact that he's tall or fit or rich or has status or, or any of these things. He just seems to be like a really nice guy and she wants to have a family and he ends up being, you go, I wasn't expecting that. I wasn't expecting that. That was something that would have surprised me. You think, okay, well, that shows an evolution of talking points, but I don't know how many times, and this is why, you know, I've I'm still fascinated in evolutionary psychology and intersexual and intersexual dynamics and all of that stuff. It's still very interesting to me. But the whole, like, lambasting women for having standards that are too high, that, that, that never was something that really crossed my world of content creation. But even now it's like, okay, so what, like, what else is happening? How can we, here's an interesting angle. Here's a much more interesting angle for me for something that's contemporary and new. This uh, skew of young girls to the left and this skew of young, girls, young guys to the right. Uh -huh. Given the fact that most people date within their political affiliation and because politics are becoming more important to each individual person now, that's interesting. That's like a new, okay, so what do we do? Where's this coming from? And what does this mean? 30% of Democrat parents are afraid that their son or daughter would marry a Republican. That's interesting. So what, what about like parental pressure and how did that play into it? That's interesting. You can keep talking about the same thing, but do it with a different angle on it, continuing to just hammer away in the same points. And no, it's just yeah. fair play if you have that degree of patience, maybe, to be able to just have the same conversation a thousand times. But it's a... I don't, I don't have that in my mm -hmm. toolbox. That's a tough one for me to wrap my mind around yeah, fully. Yeah, they're kind of... Because they kind of went off topic a little bit. Yeah. Because yeah. I will say this. If Andrew and Tristan are innocent, even if they go to prison, they will say they're innocent. And if they don't go to prison, they'll say, yeah, it's because I wasn't innocent. So that was a horrible because example. Because you were innocent. Because they, huh? were, in because they were innocent. Yeah, I'm saying, yeah, 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 yeah if yeah. you didn't go to prison, it would be because you were innocent. Yeah. So what I'm saying is, what Destiny just said didn't I think, mean any so sense. I, think, I get what he's trying to say, I but think he the, communicated that so poorly. I mean, his analogy could have been better, but I think, again, it was just the simple reality that, so cognitive dissonance, you know, you look at people where they have a belief of something, mm -hmm. and I tell them, hey, this is actually right, and you're like, no, it's not, because you can't wrap your head around the fact that you believe something for so long, and now I've told you that's not true anymore. Like mm -hmm. you, you have to make sense of it. So for you, it makes sense that, um, Santa Claus is real because your parents always told you it was real. Yeah. Then I tell you it's not real. And now your whole world has been completely shattered because you're like, well, if this isn't real, what else is? Yeah. And you start down this rabbit hole. It's like I remember years ago I got into the whole um, music industry and I started like, I don't know if you've ever seen like those old breakdowns like the Rihanna Umbrella video. Uh, yeah, and, like, yeah. and I couldn't listen to music for like a week. My buddy was calling me. He's like, bro, are you okay? And I'm like, bro, I can't leave the house. I'm like everything's messed up because it, but it really was this like cognitive dissonance for me at a young age yeah. where I started to realize like, wait, there's more to things in this world that like I didn't understand. Mm -hmm. So I, I just think the point he was trying to make is that they're so hyper focused on these scenarios that no matter what you say to them, they're like, oh yeah, because it was that, and you're like, well, not really because of the context I'm going to give you, and like, no, 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 it doesn't matter. It was still that. Well, the reason. reason why I say it was a terrible example because they're talking about his personal experience, so either they are lying to themselves or they are actually innocent. Like if you're talking about beliefs, like for example, that you can just sleep with another random woman and your girl should just be happy as long as you come home, you know, and you're cheating on her. That's obviously if you're just going to be in denial about how that actually hurts people, that's different. But if you're talking about the evidence behind going to prison or not, if you are actually innocent, getting other people to, I think you, they actually believe they're innocent is the thing, but that's the thing. I, I, think I actually point think they're innocent. No, and the reason maybe, being, may, but maybe uh, so regardless of if they are or aren't, I think what he's saying is in their minds, regardless of what happens, they're still going to be like, no, this is the reality. And but I think that's, that's but if they didn't do what they're accused of, then I would believe that too. If I went to prison, 
in my mind falsely, I'm still going to have that opinion that I was of course, but if convicted. I told you something like, so you use the example of a guy sleeping around. Like I knew a guy used to go to our church and he believed that if he did something with a woman, it was a reward from his hard work. So same no, as that's, red pill. that's red pill. But that's like he literally believed yeah. in Christ. Like he like made it into like a biblical yeah. perspective. Yeah. We, we'd be in like these like purity groups and stuff and he'd be talking about it and everyone would just be like, and he yeah. was so outlandish about it where he's like, yeah, man, I had a hard week at work. So if I want to go get me some, like, who's going to tell me otherwise? I earned that. Yeah. And you're so like, that's a specific belief system. That's different than if but you, he truly, but for example, but, but it, if you told him, hey, that's not like, but that's based in the Bible. I agree with you on that. 100%. I think that's what he's trying to say. Is my but point. that's why he gave a horrible example. Because, for example, if you didn't shoot somebody, then you got arrested for shooting someone. And people are like, oh, you're just in denial because you're just saying even if you go to prison that you're still innocent. No, I didn't shoot somebody. Like, what are you saying? Obviously, when it comes to his belief system, your buddy's belief system, mm -hmm. that what he was doing was right, that's just obviously a false mentality but that it, we believe. But, it, but he will de he'll defend it to the death. It probably. comes down to the worldview. Yeah. Because Destiny, if you know his past, <laughs> his wife cheated on him. He was in an open relationship. For a long period he, of time. I don't like Destiny at all, dude. Hearing know, him talk but, but makes my skin crawl. I context can't. is important. Ah, He was in a relationship with a woman. He, they had an open relationship. And they decided, hey, we're just going to see whoever we want. So for him, the idea of monogamous relationships doesn't actually matter. It, it means nothing. So he's hypocritical. So the no, it's not just hi hypocriticalness. The foundational worldview that he's talking about it's completely against what he's saying because it doesn't actually match up with the ideologies that he's talking about. Yeah. So when he's saying these things to Chris, he's speaking from a place of authority that he has no authority in. Yeah. You can't speak from a place that you have been completely erupt, not erupt, but well, it isn't that, I mean, that's the world today, right? Double mindedness. It's the reality you real. say, you say, Hey, you shouldn't do this while behind closed doors you're doing it. Correct. And but you put on a public platform on a podcast and you say, I, hey, I'm going to, I'm going to put forth this ideology of what I believe. Yeah. And it's literally nothing compared to what I actually do behind closed doors. What you're talking about. Yeah. Double mindedness. And what he's doing is completely antithetical to everything he believes. Yeah, I mean, men having maturity is important because, for example, I personally love watching Andrew Tate. Yeah, I mean, it's, unless it's, it's, he's it's, on it's, Fresh it's, and Fit, then I just want to throw my computer. Well, it's but because you like it's, you like when he has no shirt on. It's because it's because of the host. I'm it's, talking. I'm hey, talking hey, about hey, actual hey, podcasts. Hey, it's because of the host, right? It's not because of Andrew Tate. Yeah, Andrew Tate goes on a platform. He speaks pretty much the same thing he's always spoken. It's the host that maybe do probing questions. To get him so would about you things. say, going back to what we were talking about before, does Tate kind of change the way he communicates no. based off the host? No. So the conversation no. becomes more versed. No. no, it's just he, he doesn't. He'll if he respects the person. He like again, certain people bring out the worst in him. For example, fresh and fit. Oh, dude. So that's that's what I'm asking. So, so I used bring, the example before. So what do you the mean by the, what do you mean by bring out the worst? So dude, remember, he goes uh, like you saw when they traveled to Romania, the video that he did with them. Yeah, where they were sitting. I couldn't watch that video, but his other videos on other podcasts, yeah. I like watching it because I have the maturity to know what is actually yeah. valuable. For him, that, that, was his, that was his locker room yeah, talk. Yeah, and I know- But what, that's what I'm saying which to you. Is, so when I talk about the guy in the sauna with yeah. the cop, where he didn't really believe what the cop was saying, but wanted to, I just, I'm gonna refer to him as the cop, wanted to fit in with the group. So he used group think. So you think it was it Andrew was trying to fit in? I think it's the same concept of what I said before where you said, well, why do men do that? It's, it's, it, you're, you're being culturally kind of like, it's an orbit, right? So if, I, if you're in my orbit and you want to fit in with me, what are you going to do? You're going to kind of, yeah, I'm going to make the same joke. He pretty much laugh. goes off though on all those other podcasts too. He just, I think what he is is he's trying to be more respectful. Re just, does he redesign the talking points? No, he still goes off and calls every, goes into the most crazy What do you guys, what do you, what do you well, guys last, think? Well, last, Honestly, what do you guys think? No, but what I'll say is again, have maturity to grab the good from different people. No one. Chew on the I meat, spit out the bones. Exactly. Yeah. I do not agree with any person online 100%. You shouldn't. I agree with 80% of what yeah. Andrew says. And then you the can't other, agree with I just everybody. can't. I can't. So I think, have maturity. And I think like in that, my last point on it, I agree with what you're saying, I think. But it's you have to be careful because I think for some people, 
It's like I talked about a while back. If you put dirty water in a fountain over time, it's going to get polluted. What are you going to get? So if you're someone that is susceptible and you're in a place that you're very... Sometimes people are in a place where they're like sponges more than Young other guys, times. Young guys, exactly. And they just, they're taking everything in. So if you're listening so to a guy like Tate or someone else where so if you're weak and you're in a broken place and you hear something like that, it's going to motivate and bring something out of you, but you're not going to be able to depict the good from the bad. So that's why I think you have to be very cautious with what you listen to, what you watch, because I mean- Everything. I mean, these are these are how we bring in the world, right? Our yeah. eyes, our ears. Yeah. That's how you're consuming information. So I think you have to be very cautious because yeah. maybe someone in a certain place, yeah, they can watch something from Andrew Tate and get something out of it like yourself. Someone that's not in that state, it could be very detrimental to their growth and them as a person. AKA, don't sleep around with 50 women. Love you guys. <laughs> we will see you on the next video. Don't forget to subscribe. It's been a pleasure. Just 49. <laughs> it's been a pleasure. Peace. Peace.